to go live then, that's it. Over to you, Les, carry on. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died, to buy my pardon, and empty grave is there to prove my Savior. service going live from Kilkeel Baptist Tabernacle. We're standing here this morning looking at an empty church, but you know wherever you're tuning in from, we do trust and pray that you'll feel the nearness of God beside you this morning. You'll feel them loving arms around you, carrying you through in these days of trials and troubles. And you know, we're just singing that lovely piece there, Because He Lives, we can face tomorrow. What a truth there is in that. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. The, the, the second verse, it reads at the end of it, I'm struggling even to see this. It's unbelievable. These are sort of going on me. I need to get the glasses. But he says, with calm assurance, this child can face on certain days because he lives. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters this morning, wherever you're listening from, isn't God good? We can face these uncertain days because Jesus lives. Jesus died. Jesus rose again. It's amazing what he has done for us this morning. So I trust and pray as you join us this morning, as we uh, sing a few pieces, and then as uh, Brother George will be coming live from uh, his home. He has recorded uh, a bit 
during the week, and there's a sermon going up as well. I trust that you will unite together in praise and with loving hearts this morning to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The next piece we're going to sing here this morning, I do not know what lies ahead, the way I cannot see, but one stands near to be my guide. He'll show the way to me. What amazing words. I know who holds the future. I know he'll take care of us. We'll do our best here in this one again this morning. Thank you. Thanks, Liz. thank you again indeed for these wonderful words this morning. I'll trust the God of miracles and give to him my all. Our loving Father, we thank you, Lord, for these words which remind us so much that you can do far above that we can exceedingly even ask or think. And our Father, as we come this morning, we want to acknowledge again the fact that we're coming to you in and through the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus, who died, who took upon him the sins of the world, who rose again. How we praise you this morning that we're coming to a living Savior, the one who loved us and gave himself for us. Our loving Father, we pray for all those listening today uh, via the internet. We pray, O oh God, that you'll be with them, Lord, in these days. We realize, Lord, that uh, we have been advised, Lord, to stay in. But, Lord, we realize Lord, that although we're not allowed out, we realize that you are with us all the way. Your spirit fills our hearts this morning. For those of us who know and love you, you are the ever-caring and loving God, the ever-compassionate Savior who is with us all the time. So, Lord, as we meet together this morning via the internet, Lord, we pray, Lord, that our time will be precious in thy sight, O Lord. O Lord, we thank you for the hymns we've been singing there already. And as we sing a few more, we do pray that you'll lift our hearts this morning 
as we glorify you in praise. Lord, uh, I was reminded this morning, Brother George sent us a text, and I, it was in Second Chronicles, where it said that the men and the women went out singing and praising. And it was the singers that went first forth to battle. So, Lord, we're here to sing thy praise amidst all the storms and the circumstances and all that's going on in life. We realize that you want to hear us sing. So, Lord, this morning we're commencing with a song in our hearts and our praise to you this morning. We pray for everyone listening at home that they may be able to enjoy this time of praise together as we sing, that they, even in their own homes, may be able to sing and praise you this morning. Pray for all of our, our church family here that are listening in. We pray you'll be with them. For all those who are feeling the way tough today, who are feeling the road hard and long, even before this has come, Lord, if they've had illness in their life, Lord, there's, there's, there's everything going on, health matters, maybe financial problems, anything, Lord, how we pray they'll look to you in these days. Help us, Lord, to trust in you. You are the God who cares and give himself for us. So, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you'll be with all of those who need a touch from you this morning. Pray for Pastor George as well. We pray that you'll soon clear up that whole chesty cough that he has, Lord, and that uh, soon, Lord, that he'll be able, Lord, even to come along and bring messages here again uh, to us, thy, thy children and thy people. Lord, just bless us here as we continue on for a few moments in praise and bless thy word even as it goes forth through Pastor George in a while's time. In thy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Alan. Uh, it's lovely as we gather here this morning, as Alan has already said, and we are praising the Lord, those of us that are here, and I know at home you're praising him just now. Do you know, Alan said we look around an empty building, and you know, that reminds me of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever he was a risen Savior, the tomb was empty. And God, praise God this morning, we can worship him. I look around and I can see the faces that would normally sit in certain places, but I know your hearts are with us this morning, and our hearts are with you as we worship Christ together. Last week, we sang Burdens Are Lifted at Calvary. You'll remember that last week. And thine be, uh, have thine own way, Lord. You are the potter. I am the clay. Mm -hmm. As we come through another week, folks, as we've come through another week of news that we hear of people dying and the threat of people dying and the fear of people dying, isn't it lovely that we, the children of God, can praise Him wherever we are, whether you're in your living room just now listening to Him or whatever, or listening to us, I pray that the Lord will lift your hearts. We're thinking about you, and especially the old of our fellowship and indeed our community. If you need anything from us, as we've sent letters out to you all, please feel free to get in touch with us. Sing in some lovely pieces. Father, I place into your hands the things that I can't do. Do you know, man thinks he can do everything technically and do all the works that he can, but do you know what we've seen in the last number of weeks? God is in control. I read a thing this morning from Don, our friend Donald Fleming about doctors in Italy, and they were atheists, and there was a Christian pastor who was reading his Bible constantly, and now they've turned from their ways and are trusting Jesus Christ because of this Christian pastor. And he passed away, but they now realize there's a God in heaven. Let's place into his hands, that, like this lovely piece suggests, Let's place into His hands our lives and the issues of our lives and our families in these days. Thank you, Liz. Father, I place into Your hands the things that I can do. Father, I place into Your hands the times that I I place into your hands the way that I should go, for I know I always can trust you. Father, I place into your hands my friends and family. Father, I place into your hands the things that trouble me. Thank 
Is it the last? No, it's not the last piece. Um, the next piece we're going to sing is Wonderful Grace. But can I just thank Jason, Matthew, Mark, Andrew, James, Liz, and Elizabeth? Uh, and, and you see us four here at the front. <laughs> we need no introduction, but it's lovely, lovely to be here with you just now. And you know what? Our hearts are lifted because we believe the presence of the Lord is here with us just now. Wonderful Grace. It's one of my favorite pieces, as you will all know, and you'll sit and smile and say, well, Gordon, you do sing this, but you know what? I wouldn't be standing here this morning if it wasn't for God's grace, and I have to call it wonderful grace that gives me what I don't deserve. Do you know, we as the family of God need to unite together today and pray, and I believe that's God, what God's also wanting us to do to trust in His wonderful grace, the grace that was displayed at Calvary, where He died on the cross for you and me. And you know, those of us that are saved, what an assurance and what a hope one day we are going to be with Him. Let's sing it with all your heart, and if you know the words at home, sing along with us, please. Wonderful grace. quiet time at home, there was a chorus come to my heart, and it's one that Emmanuel uh, sang, and it's on some of our CDs, and it's entitled, God Wants to Hear You Sing, and there's a verse in it, and it goes like this, God wants to hear you sing when the waves are crashing round you, when the fiery darts surround you, when despair is all you see. God wants to hear your voice when the wisest man has spoken and says your circumstances 
your circumstances hopeless as can be, that's when God wants to hear you sing. What an amazing uh, word and in that there, how God wants to hear us sing in all these times of hardship. So I encourage you this morning, brothers and sisters, keep looking on to him, trust in him. God is good. What I say last week, God is God, and that's that. Always remember that. Uh, that was one from Bob, Bob uh, McAllister, so it was absolutely brilliant. The last piece we're going to finish with is Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. We're just going to sing the, the chorus and the first verse, lovely words again, O soul, are you troubled and weary? And then it goes on to turn your eyes upon Jesus. That's where we should be looking to these days. We should have faith in him that he can take care of all. After we sing this piece, it will be going over to Brother George. So you continue to listen then. All right. God bless and thank you. morning everyone and we give you all a very warm welcome and joining with us on this uh, link today uh, unfortunately we are unable to enjoy fellowship with one another the way we normally enjoy fellowship and experience fellowship but because of this coronavirus in the world today and uh, the medical advice that has been given we do want to take the safety precautions for the time being uh, uh, to keep everyone safe but thank you so much for taking the time with us and to join with us here uh, today whether you're watching on television or using your ipad whatever way it is uh, we thank you for joining with us never in our day and generation could we ever have imagined uh, the situation that our world is in today and i was just thinking earlier on this morning you know there's no way that we could have ever imagined the crisis that we face in our world today. And indeed, when we do think of, of today's world, we're facing a situation uh, that affects not only our families, it affects our land, it affects our nation, it affects the whole world. And indeed, right across the world today, there is a, there is a spirit of fear, there's a spirit of anxiety, there is a spirit of... Of, of confusion uh, amongst people today and there's one thing I do want to make absolutely clear to you as you listen and that is God himself understands what is going on and he knows all about what is going on and God himself is in control of all that is going on in our world today the tragedy is friends we live in a world today we live in a world that has totally turned its back upon God. Mankind today lives in such a rebellion against God's ways and against God's word. And perhaps this is the means and method that God is using to speak to our world and to show our world 
that mankind has no power nor he has no authority under the power and the authority of God himself. We must always remember in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and without him was nothing made. So many people in our world today are asking the question, what on earth is happening in our world today? What is going on? Well, when I think of the days of Noah, when Noah went into the ark and we read that God closed the door, I'm sure the people outside the ark, after God had shut Noah and the family in, as the dark clouds gathered over and the rain began to fall, I'm sure that the people of Noah's day asked the very same question, what on earth is going on? I'm sure the people of Sodom and Gomorrah asked the same question. When God took Lot and his two daughters and his wife out of Sodom and Gomorrah, and when the the hail and the fire began to fall. I'm sure the people of Sodom and Gomorrah began to ask the question too. What on earth in the world is going on? Well, the Lord Jesus, during his earthly ministry, pointed back to those two days. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of God. And he also did say, and as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of God. Well, you see, dear friend, in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot, on both occasions, mankind lived in total rebellion of God. There was no thought of God. There was no consideration. There was no fear of God. And in fact, in those days in which they lived, we live in the very same days today. But there's one thing that if you're saved, there is absolutely nothing that you and I uh, have any need to be concerned about. Because you and I are the most protected. You and I are the most privileged people upon planet Earth. Why? Because we are the children of God. In the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 12 and verse number 2, we read these words. I shall trust in the Lord and not be afraid. And I think that's a wonderful thought. I will trust and not be afraid. That reminds me of a wee story way back in the days of C.H. Spurgeon when a lady who used to attend his church was an awful warrior. She worried about this and she worried about that and she worried about the other thing. And, and one day that she had nothing to worry about when she started to worry because she had nothing to worry about. Well, dear child of God, here's a wonderful verse to hold on to. Here's something I want you to really take to heart today. I will trust and not be afraid. Thank God today that our times are in his hands. And as this whole world is brought to a standstill and, and as we face uncertain deaths, we can hold on to the very fact that we know that God is in control and nothing can happen outside his authority and outside his power. In a few moments, you're going to watch a sermon that I preached a number of months ago it was called and entitled, Advice for the Anxious. So many people are anxious today about what's going on, and even some Christians today are anxious. But as you listen to this message, I trust that it will bless your heart, encourage your heart, and together, as we sit and listen to it again, may it be a blessing to your soul, and may it be an encouragement to you, and come across as fresh as it did as the day I preached it. And after we listen to the message, I'll be back again with you and we'll pray together. May God bless you and may God speak to you through the coming message. Thank you. I want you to turn with me. We're turning this morning to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Psalm 37 and verse number 1. We read, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, 
Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord, and do good, and so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. And commit thy way unto the Lord, and trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. And He shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and, and wait patiently for Him. And fret not thyself because of Him who prospereth in His way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath, fret not thyself in any ways to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Ending at verse number nine, and we Look to the Lord, as it's only the Lord who can and must bless. It was about two weeks after my father was buried. I was on the way home from work, and I was driving on, the, on my way home from work, and I thought I would put the radio on to catch the, to catch the news at half past five. And the presenter of the program said, well, to take us up to the news, I'm going to play a very moving song by John McDermott. And the song's entitled, My Old Man. And I listened to the song, and I wasn't really going to pick up on the song, but, but the first verse of the song, as I listened, I went to pieces. Because the very song that he sung, it was as if he was singing the very feelings that was in my own heart concerning my own dad. And the song, the whole theme throughout the song is all about a son reminiscing about his father and all what his father meant to him who had suddenly passed away. The song goes like this. The tears have all been shed now. We have said our last goodbye. There's no second chance to tell him thanks for all that he has done. He was more to me than a father. He was my teacher and my friend. He showed me things not known to King that will keep me till the end. And as I listened to that song, it was as if John McDermott was summing up everything concerning my relationship with my father. Because growing up, that wee line in that song, he showed me things not known to kings. Why is that stuck to me? Because my father taught me many things in life that stands by me today. And there's things that my father advised me and taught me that I have to confess that has made me the person that I am today. And yet when I was growing up, I thought, ach, the advice isn't all that important, but the older you get, you soon discover that his advice was everything. Mind him sitting at the front table 
I dreaded it when he went through my school bag over to the front table to do the homework. And he, and he always taught me this lesson. Take pride in your handwriting. Because if you're ever applying for a job and the person sees your neat handwriting and that you take pride in your handwriting, then that person's going to say, well, if he takes pride in his handwriting, then he'll take pride in his work. And he always advised me, never you owe anybody any money. And he told me this, and he advised me, never take out loans. If you don't have the money for it, you don't take, get it, and only always save. And he used to say this, if you owe anybody any money, you can't look that man square in the eye when you meet him on the street. He advised me in many ways. Many different things, countless things that my father advised me that stand by me today. But there was that wee line, another wee line, no second chance to tell him thanks. And I know my father knew that I appreciated that, but but I remember the day, I remember the next time I went up home after hearing that song, my mother, I found her in the kitchen sink. And I just said, Mum, and she turned around. And I just walked over to her and I just put my arms around her and I squeezed her. And I just says, Mum, I, I just want to say thanks for being my mum. And I just told her, Brian and me could never have wished for better parents. If you're here today and you still have got any of your parents and they've brought you up well, listen, will you take time and thank them? When we come to Psalm 37 this morning, Psalm 37, David, he's an old man in Psalm 37. He's not the young David that fought Goliath. He's the, young man, he's the old man in verse 25. It says, I have been old and I have been young and now I'm old. And he's an old man. And as he sits to write this psalm here, he, 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 under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, of course, he, he wants to encourage the people of God that's coming after him. He wants to encourage the generation that's following after him. And he wants to advise them. Because you see, if anybody that could give you advice, it was David. Because you see, David was through thick and thin. David was on the mountaintops. He had his days in the valley. He was in the very brink of death. And David knows what he's talking about when he's writing this psalm. You know what? David wasn't only through thick and thin. David wasn't only in the brink of death at times. David wasn't through the very dark valleys at times. But here's something I can tell you now. David knew what he was talking about because he proved God through it all. He proved God. And here's a man writing Psalm 37, advising the next godly generation that's coming after him. And he wants them to know that he has proved God and to take his advice. And, thus, and if this advice is taken, then you will be successful in difficult times. I want to call this morning's message Advice for the Anxious. And you know, God's people can get anxious at times. God's people can find themselves in positions and in situations where they don't know where to turn. But then not only will you find advice for the anxious, but David gives uh, uh, advice for the angry too. Do you know there's anxious saints and there's angry saints? Verse number 8, cease from anger. Man, you, I'll tell you, saints can get angry. And it's a psalm for aged saints, and it's a psalm for all saints. But, but the message the Lord has given to me this morning is, is advice for 
anxious, saints. And I wonder, have you come to the meeting this morning and you're anxious? You're troubled about something. You're worried about something. Well, the Lord has a wee, a wee word for your heart this morning. Look at verse number, number one. We have the advice that is afforded. He says, fret not thyself. You know what David's advising this morning here? And he knows what he's talking about. Let's remember David has been through the valleys. He's been through those terrible times. Do you know what he's saying this morning? Don't you allow anything to overthrow your mind. Don't you let anyone this morning overthrow your mind. You know, we fight a mighty enemy this morning. And the devil this morning loves to engage with our minds. And he'll use anything. And he'll use anyone to try and overthrow you by getting to your mind. You see, your mind this morning, your mind is the doorway to your heart. It's the doorway to your soul. It's the doorway to your spirit this morning. And the devil knows that, that your mind is a powerful thing. Here's a wee question this morning. Are you in control of your thought life? Or is your thought life in control of you? Tell me this, brethren and sisters, this morning. Are you in control of your thoughts? Or are your thoughts in control of you? You remember this morning what the Bible says in Psalm 12, Proverbs 23 and 7. As a man thinketh, so is he. And wait till I tell you, when I think of David this morning, I, I think of all of those times when he fretted. I think of all the times when David was worried. I remember all the times when David was anxious. My goodness me, do you mind the morning when we found him in the cave of Adullam? He had nowhere to go to. But David now is an old man, and he looks back to all of those days, and he has learned this lesson. Through those dark times, through those difficult times, when there was nowhere to turn, God was in control all the time. Maybe you're here this morning and you're anxious and you're troubled and you're worried. Listen this morning. God has your situation under control. And as David looks back in this Psalm, as he writes it, you know what he's learned? He's learned all the worrying, all the fretting wasn't worth it. God had it under control. Do you remember what Isaiah, we read in Isaiah 12 and 2? It says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust, not be afraid. I remember one evening sitting in the car in Ochnacloy. I was only a short time saved. I'm sitting on the main street, and of course we had the, the UDR with the RUC. We had the British Army, all based in our wee village. This English soldier came over to the car, knocked the window in the car, and he says, have you got your driving license on you? He said, I have. And I took the driving license. I used to keep the driving license above the sun visor. And I opened it. And I had a wee sticker in my driving license that said, Smile, Jesus loves you. And he says to me, hands the driving license back. And he says to me, he says, I love your license. I says, why is it the photograph? I was only people I'm going. Oh, he says, I like the sticker. You know what he did? He took his helmet off. He says, what do you think of that? And I took the helmet and I read inside it. It was Psalm 56, verse 11. In God have I put my trust. I will not fear what man can do unto me. And he put the helmet back on and he set the rifle down and he opened his flak jacket. And he looked within his flak jacket and there it was all written, Yesterday God helped me. Today he did the same. How long will this continue? Forever praise 
his name. And mind you, Ochna wasn't a nice place to be during the dark days of the troubles. But there's a young man who knew to put his trust in God. You know, brethren and sisters this morning, you know what we have to do at times? We have to get our eyes off what is seen and get our eyes focused on the unseen this morning. Tell me this, who's annoying you? Who's against you this morning? What has you anxious in heart and in mind? Look at the advice that is afforded. Fret not thyself. Then I want you to look, at, look at also the mindset that is ministered because he says, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. You know, I, I don't know about you, but when you take a look around you in the world today, you know, it, it's seen, it is always seen that the rascal is always taken by the hand. And in Psalm 73, you'll read the psalmist Asaph says, you know, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps were well nigh slipped. Why? Why? Because the third verse tells us why. For I was envious of the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. You know, child of God, sometimes that makes us anxious this morning. When we see the wicked, and we see the evil, and we see the sinful taken by the hand. And we're living in a day now where right is wrong, and wrong is right. And we're living in a day now that governments are passing laws that are abominable and contrary to the Word of God. You know what the you know what the Lord's telling me? But He's been telling me this week, when you think of all that's happening in our nation and in our world, the, He's saying to me, don't go worrying about it. Don't go worrying about it. You know, maybe you're here this morning and you have applied for some position in your job. Maybe some post has come up. Maybe some place, I don't know. And, and you've worked your fingers to the bone only to be turned down for somebody else to get it who never done the half the work that you do. But here's the mindset that is ministered this morning. Don't allow your heart or your mind to get bitter. Do you know envy's an awful thing? It's an awful thing. Envy is a distorted, selfish sense of fairness. You remember this? It was envy that caused Cain to slay Abel. And you remember it was envy that caused Saul to try and slay David. And you remember it was because of envy the religious people handed the Lord Jesus over to be crucified. Listen, don't you be envious of anybody this morning. David, David learned a lot of lessons in life. That's why, you know, we should take advice from people that's older than us because they've been on the ground before us. They've learned by their mistakes, and they want to make sure that you and I don't make the same mistake. You see, David made mistakes, but he wants you and I not to make the same mistakes. The advice that is afforded, fret not thyself because of evildoers. The mindset that is ministered, be not, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. And then I see the outcome that is observed in verse 2. It says here, For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, aye, and wither as the green herb. You see, the whole concept of this psalm this morning is all about coping, coping with the evil that's going on all around us. David says in verse 12 of the same psalm, 
the wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. But look at verse 13. The Lord shall laugh at him. Why? For he saith that his day is coming. Listen, I'm not worried about what's going on in the world today because I know God has it under control. And child of God, we should not be getting ourselves all anguished because, listen, listen, because God's going to work it all out this, this, this morning. And listen, whatever situation you're going through, God's working it out. You mightn't be able to understand what's going on, but God will. And I think of our nation today, and I think of what's going on in our world today. Ah, yes, the world today laughs in the face of God. I'll tell you this, God will have the last laugh. And you remember they that laugh last, laughs best. And God will one day have His way. Verse 13, it says there, it says, The Lord shall laugh at him, for he saith that his day is coming. Job 21, it's the same situation. The wicked, the evil, the abominable, man that says they spend their days in wealth, they're always in the increase. But in the very same verse it says, in a moment they shall go down to their grave. You know what I've learned? I have learned this through life. It's a very dangerous thing to do anything on a child of God. Do you see if you do anything on a child of God, you're doing it to the Lord Jesus? What did the Lord Jesus say to Saul at Tarsus? Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Listen, brother and sister. Don't you be gossiping or black-mouthing other believers. It's a very dangerous thing, and mind you, the Lord will afflict you for it. And I have seen Christians suffer terribly because of what they done on other believers. Be careful what you say about other believers and be careful what you do as well because I can tell you the Lord's listening and the Lord will hold you to account for it. And David, through his life, saw the outcome that he observed. You know, brethren and sisters, this morning, here's the advice David gives me. He gives me this. Don't just look for the here and now. Look for the long view of your situation because God will deal with those. Listen, listen. I, I want you to look at the path that is prosperous in verse 3. Look what it says. Trust in the Lord and do good, and so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. You see, trust in the Lord, that's faith, and do good, that, that's works. Here's something maybe for somebody's heart this morning. It's a good job I don't know us. Thank the Lord knows. Tell me this. Is there somebody here this morning and you've tried and you've tried and you've tried to make reconciliation with someone and you've tried and you've tried to heal the hurt that has maybe happened between you and somebody else and you've tried and you've tried and you've tried only to get it through back in your face, have you? And that person this morning could be anybody in your family. And you've tried, and you've tried, and you've tried for it to be thrown back in your face. And maybe you're here this morning, and what you've discovered, the more I'm trying, the more I'm tormenting myself. And the more you're trying, the more you're ending up with sleepless nights. And you want so desperately to reconcile with that person. And you've tried over and over and over and over again. Think of David. David tried to do it with Saul in Psalm, 1 Samuel 26 and verse 18. He said to Saul, listen, what have I done? What evil was in my hand towards you, Saul, that wants to make you kill me? 
You know what David had to learn to do? Stop trying and start trusting the Lord. And sometimes, brethren and sisters, we have to let go. We have to stand back and just trust the Lord with them people. And maybe the Lord is saying to some heart this morning, listen, stop trying, but listen, keep praying for them. Keep loving for them. Keep loving them. Romans 12, verse 21 says, Be not overcome with evil, but overcome with good. And maybe there's someone this morning, maybe in your family, maybe in your workplace, and they're gossiping lies about you. Do good. It says here, trust in the Lord and do good. When Joseph was being sold by his very brethren, all he could do was trust in the Lord when they put him in the pit. And you remember when Potiphar's wife tried to do what she did and then ended up in the prison. Friend, you remember all Joseph could do was trust in the Lord and do good. When I think of Joseph this morning and what he went through, friend, verse, tw- verse 3 was his rule. All he could do was trust in the Lord and do good. That's good advice this morning. No wonder this morning, no wonder this morning, is there someone here and you're going through a rough, tough time and you're anxious this morning. Well, here's what the Lord is saying to you. Fret not. Neither be thou envious, and trust in the Lord, and do good. And then I want you to notice the attitude that is a warning in verse 4. He says, listen, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. You know what means? You know what David means when he says, delight thyself in the Lord? He says, get taken up with the Lord. Instead of getting taken up with whatever circumstance, whatever situation, get taken up with the Lord. Do you remember that dark day the Lord told us about it way back, or maybe three or four weeks ago? Do you remember that day when the enemy came to Ziglag? And friend, when David came back to Ziglag, the place was burned to a crisp, and all the family and all everybody and all the belongings were gone. And the people wept so much that they could weep no more. And you remember what happened. The people very was, was going to actually going to stone David. You know what David did? He encouraged himself in the Lord his God. You know, sometimes, child of God, Here's the answer for anxiety this morning. Delight thyself also in the Lord. Get taken up with Him. You know, sometimes, listen, I'm only human. I'm only human. And sometimes I have to take myself away, out of the road. Sometimes it's in the garden shade. Open the door and close it. And I get down on my knees where nobody knows or sees me. And I just cry out to the Lord. I says, Lord, I don't know what's going on. But Lord, I just want to get taken up with you away above this. And you know what he does? He ends up giving you the desires of your heart. You know, that's what's wrong with us at times. That's what's wrong with me at times. I get taken up with more things instead of getting taken up with the Lord. And this is what David has discovered here. He says, listen, 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 listen. Delight thyself also in the Lord. Totally devote yourselves unto him. Start living life his way. Live for him above everything. Sound advice, isn't it? And then there's the commitment that is crucial. Verse 5, commit thy way unto the Lord, and trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And as I bring God's message to a close, this is what he wants to say. Whatever has you anxious, whoever has you anxious, just you committed to the Lord and trust in Him and He will He will see you through.
There's a lovely verse, and I've quoted it. I think it's the best verse in the whole of the psalm. Because here's David's testimony of the whole thing concerning his life. It's verse 25. He says, I have been old, young, and now I'm old. And yet, have I not seen the righteous forsaken? nor a seed begging bread. And David's advice in this psalm is, be anxious for nothing. Because here's a man who has proved God's faithfulness, who has proved God's goodness, and who has proved God's greatness. And the God that saw David through his dark, anxious times is the same God that will see through your and your dark, anxious times. And he's the same God that will see me through my dark, anxious times. Let's take the advice this morning. Let's live in the joy of the Lord, leaning every day on His everlasting arm. May God bless His Word to our hearts this morning. We're going to turn to that hymn, 377. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Standing to sing and remain standing for the closing prayer. thank thee for the everlasting arms that are able to secure us 
and sustain us and strengthen us through every dark and difficult trial that may come across our way. And help us, Lord, not to be anxious. Help us, Lord, always to be assured that underneath and round about what must come or may, there's always the everlasting arms to lean upon. Bless those that must leave and Bless us now, Lord, as we wait around this thy table, as we remember the Lord's death in his own appointed way. Bless us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hello again, everyone, and I do trust that the message that you've just heard, uh, it will indeed encourage your heart and was a blessing to your soul, because we do know that the Lord is everything under his control. And uh, we do pray earnestly that as we go through these days of uncertainty, that God will indeed speak very loudly to those who have no concern whatsoever for their soul, but will also speak loudly to the church itself worldwide, because I believe the church needs to repent of its apathy today and to return to its first love, and indeed that the fear of God will once again fall upon God's own redeemed people. Before I do a uh, closing prayer, I want to say please tune in tonight at 6 p.m. Uh, tonight we're showing on the link um, the testimony of Mr. Roy Walker. And Roy has a wonderful testimony. Roy was a manager, a very successful manager of the Crusaders Football Club. And so Roy will be on tonight at 6 p.m. Uh, to to share his testimony and I hope you'll tune in again and I know that will be a blessing to you. Now please do everyone, do take care in these days. Um, we're the next 14 to uh, 21 uh, days will be very crucial and um, we need to be careful and take the professional advice from, from the medical experts because they know what they're talking about more so than what I do and we do need to be very careful that uh, that we do follow that advice in these days. I don't like this as much as you don't like it, and but unfortunately we want to be careful for the, everybody's health and safety. So tonight, um, please do tune in uh, 6 p.m. and we'll see you then. Well, you'll see me, but I won't and see you unfortunately, and trust that you'll join with us again. But before we do close off, shall we just bow together wherever you are? Uh, let's bow together in prayer and commit ourselves to the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, in the precious name of the Lord Jesus, we just come before Thee. And Lord, we thank You for every blessing that You bestow upon us. But Lord, in these days of such uncertainty, we just pray, O God, that Thou would indeed draw very near to us and help us uh, to walk with Thee through these days. We just pray, Lord, also that, that indeed as we seek to live our lives outside the normal routine, that, Lord, indeed, you will help us to know that you are in control and that our times are in your hands. I pray for every member, and I pray for every friend, and I pray for every person connected with our fellowship and also for their families, that, Lord, you will keep us all safe in these days and help us, Lord, to know that our times are in your hands. We want to thank you, Lord, for the cross. We want to thank you, Lord, indeed, for the empty tomb. We want to thank you for him who now sitteth on thy right hand, making intercession for us. Lord, bless us. Keep us safe, Lord. Keep us close to thee. And even though we're separated one from the other, may we know that we are indeed within the greatest family of all. We're all within the family of God. So bless us now, we pray, and keep us. And pray, Lord, you'll bless this evening as we go live again. For we pray in our Saviour's precious name. Amen and amen. God bless everyone and do take care. And tonight, uh, tune in 6 o'clock with Roy Walker. God bless you everyone and please stay safe. Thank you.